Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over signal flow in Ableton Live. Having a understanding and concept of how signals flow through this program is very important. So we're going to be going about that. I'm going to be explaining it visually so that we all can understand. So let me start off by saying that I chose my words very carefully. I chose the word signal, right? And a signal can be any number of two things, right? It can only be two things, I should say. It can either be audio, right? Or it can be MIDI, right? So we have audio or MIDI. And when I say signal, I mean any one of those things, right? MIDI is uh, data. Audio is, you know, what you're hearing through your speakers right now, just vibrations and stuff like that. So MIDI is just like, you know, pulses and stuff like that. Audio is squiggly stuff, for lack of a better explanation. And we'll get more into the nitty gritty theory at uh, some point soon. So let's start off by just doing a, a basic uh, theory of operation and a kind of a flow chart. So things, I'm going to explain things uh, left to right, because that tends to make a little bit more sense. Let's look at this box right here. Uh, this box right here will be a track. And it doesn't, it's not a MIDI track or an audio track, it's just a track, right? Because we're doing abstractions right now. Oh, wait, no, not tracks. This will be a uh, track one. Okay. And uh, let's get some more uh, tracks in there. Let me Get rid of that precision mode, get more tracks. And we'll have that these tracks are all going to be together. And that'd be track two. And this will be track three. Okay, so all these tracks are kind of, you know, in parallel. What do those feed into? Well, Basic, basic, basic is they are fed into the master, which is the the master uh, channel or track on the right. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. I'm just going to write this down. So the master is essentially just another channel, but it's the channel that is kind of what everything is what everything is fed into, and that you hear. And I'll just I'll just kind of draw that in like so, right? So that'll just go in there, that'll just go in there. So all these tracks are being fed into the master, all right? And that works, things are summed together, and each track will have its own um, volume control, its own fader, it will have panning, and it can even have its own kind of effect section uh, enclosed within this block, and then that's fed to the master. And then this master will have its own in effects within it, and it'll be enclosed to this block. All right, so what do we have, you know, what if we have, you know, more tracks here? All right, so let's, uh, let's name, let's name these. This will be, uh, track four, and this will be track five, right? Let's say I want to, I don't know, um, route track three and track four together so that they can be, they'll, they'll have their own shared effects in track five. Well, I can do that. So I will, you know, do that now, you know, track four will be routed into track five, and track three will be routed into track five, and then track five will be sent to the master. So track three and track four are not going to the master anymore. They are going into this uh, track five here, and this is called a bus, right? This is a bus. Right, and it's what it is. Is it's a thing that just uh, things are sent to, and you know, you can do some, you know, busing and get some really cool effects that way, which gets into uh, 
mixing and general production say if you have you know all your drums you can have all your drums in to one channel and then you can have an effect on that and it'll affect all your drums together and you have a lot more uh, cohesion there so that's kind of a, a general um, theory and let's look at you know Let's say, you know, let's get a let's get a, a send here. So say we have um, an effect here or a send or a you know an effect that we want. Yeah, this'll this'll be a, an effect like a, a reverb. That's a terrible spelling of no no no. Let me let me redo that. So <laughs> this will be a reverb um, uh, effects. And or it could be anything. It could be it could be a delay or something like that. Well, I don't, you know, having all these things routed into a track that has that reverb, it's kind of, kind of pointless. You know what I mean? Um, and it's just too much routing. What if I could split uh, any of these right through the through the mixer? I could split that. And that will also go into the effect. And then from track two, it'll also go into that reverb. And then from track one, it'll also go into that reverb. And then I have uh, volume and control over how much is being sent into this reverb. And the reason why you'd want um, some of your tracks um, sharing the same reverb is because it'll, everything will sound like it's in one space. So, you know, we're getting a general idea of how routing can occur. This is basic routing here. So uh, basic routing and signal flow. But right out of the box, live has, you know, essentially all the tracks are being sent into, oops, just the master. So you know, that's no longer a bus, and everything is being sent into this master here. And how we change uh, what's being sent to what, uh, it requires a little bit of knowledge of, you know, how things work. But every time you make a new track, it is basically just being sent to the master track. All right. So there you go. Let's move on to some more stuff. Okay, so... Let's look at a clip, and we're going to be looking at an audio clip today. We'll use the one that we used uh, in the last video, which would be the kick. I'll drag that into the audio track, right? And uh, I'll double-click it, and then there's my clip down there. Very cool, and it's within my audio track. So for the sake of, I guess, uh, not argument, but for the sake of um, simplicity, let's just say... I mean, 95% of the time, the origin of all sound is the clip within live. So this is the clip, and we're going to be working from left to right. This is the signal um, start, right? So this right here, this clip, when I hit play, that is where it is generating from and where does it go next well it goes into the device it sticks within its uh, track and it goes into what is called the device view right so this is the device view if i click down here below me this is the device view this would be uh, i'm going to write that out you know uh, this is the uh, device you, you no no oh geez we're gonna know i can't spell or i get dyslexia um so yeah the clip is fed the audio is fed into the device view and the device view are basically you know uh it's effects essentially so this would be either you know effects or Mm, yeah, essentially effects. Uh, for the time being, I don't want to uh, confuse. If we go back to the clip, the clip can be, uh, what can it be? It can be audio, or it could be 
MIDI, right? So what happens if you send MIDI into the device view? Well, there's another fun thing that you can have in there, and that would be uh, some sort of sound generator or instrum. Wow. Wow. This would be in drum and right only in the context of MIDI though. So if it's MIDI, get that MIDI data being fed into an instrument or a synth, right? So keep that in mind. Clip signal start audio MIDI and that is fed into device view, which is down here. And I'll demonstrate, oops, I'll demonstrate that right now. So let's go into audio effects, and I will drag in an auto filter into the kick channel. And notice down here, you'll see something. Down in the device view, look down, boom. Drop that down, and we have an effect, which is gonna be the star of the next video, which is the auto filter. And this is essentially kind of, you know, what's going on within this device uh, viewer. Things are moving left to right in this device viewer. If I drag in another effect, which would be EQ8, right, you can see, right, and I'm going to highlight these, you can see this right, you can see this right here, and this right here, and this right here. These are uh, volume readouts. This one right here is directly from the clip into the device viewer. So this device viewer is represented here, and the signal goes left to right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute this channel, this track, by hitting uh, the two. And uh, no, I got to take that off. I'll hit two there and I've effectively muted it and I'll play it and we can actually see what's happening is the 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 clip is playing right and I'll go over to the device view and we notice that the audio is coming in here it's going through the filter going through there we can see the chain and things are moving in a leftwards motion right in this clip, things are moving, you know, like, uh, do I need to explain, like, things are, things are, things are going this way, right, always this way, and then this would be the, the end of the uh, device viewer, right, and this would be, yeah, uh, device end, so think of this, this is all enclosed within this device view block. From there, where does it go? It goes, into the fader, the fader section. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. I'm just going to name it. All right. This is the fader section. I call it the fader section. And this has a, a number of things. This would be a, you know, a volume, or it would be a send um, amount right so volume and send and yeah so from the device to the fader so i'm just going to briefly go over this so the clip right here is represented by this clip in our particular case right and the device view is represented down here and then the fader is represented right here right? And I'll draw arrows to all these things um, as we go. Next up is uh, the master, for the most part, right? That's, that's where, you know, right after the track with everything in it, this will be uh, the master here. So I'm just going to say the master or uh, master out, right? And signals flow there, and all is good right? So this right here, that right there, this is the track. Right? So everything within this track is uh, represented. Clip, device view, fader. 
Okay, there are some things within this track that are that make it um, very exciting. So, I want to briefly briefly go over you know what this uh, return is doing. That is represented over here. Just think of it as like a disembodied um, thing. So, what that is, and I'll just kind of explain it again. This is the uh, return return uh, track and this could be uh, again reverb right and the fader it's split again right post fader it's split into this reverb and then this reverb is sent to the master out right and I'll demonstrate what that does so we have the fader section right here which is um, represented here we have our volume right we're not getting anything into the master channel because it's muted if we unmute this we'll see audio being uh, you know audio flowing to the master we're gonna do that right so you know we have audio going through to there right signal flow makes sense uh, in terms of the reverb or the the send, we can increase this send volume, which is essentially the the volume out, how much we want from this fader to send to the return, right? So we'll do that, and we will see that the volume on the return will go up. So basic basic routing. So there's none. And then now there's so it's a uh, you know super uh, super interesting there. One thing to note, and this is something that I want to point out, uh, the point in which you send the 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 signal to the return is either uh, post fader or pre fader, right? So I'll demonstrate um, what that is um, visually. So this error this this flow right here so if it's post or after fader you know it would be after fader right so the the volume would be you know um i guess the the output volume slider from the fader would affect the amount being fed into the the reverb and that might not be desirable so you would actually have the 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 what's being fed into this return which is this guy right here you'd have that pre fader and that's an option on a lot of DAWs and that's what that means so right now it's post fader and now it's pre fader so it ignores the uh, the volume here and uh, you know I'll give you an example of what that does so we have uh, that right there we will increase the send like nothing going through but we have stuff going through to the return and then we go uh, post fader, sound goes away, turn it on, sound comes back. We're switching between post uh, post fader and pre fader. Hope that hope that makes sense. So let's kind of take a little bit of a step back here. All right, um, we have the ability to tap into these tracks. I'm going to start a new graph down here, right? So this is a track, right? Right. This is a track right here. This is another representation of a track. It's just collapsed, right? So there's the track and, um, you know, things are still going left to right. This is a track. We have the ability, remember I said that everything kind of starts with the clip? I kind of lied you can have outside influences um, kind of come before that and those would be you know um, ins i guess i guess we would call them right um, so this would be an in um, that's a terrible um, in i'm actually going to draw a little rectangle there so an in can essentially supersede what I just said, and I hope you don't hate me forever, but yeah, this will be an in, 
And this could be um, audio, or this could be MIDI, right? And the in can go into the in track. But it's only if we allow it to do that. And you may have noticed, you may have noticed that You'll, you'll notice that when I'm talking, this number two keeps on going up and down, right? And that is essentially an in. We have the ability to route audio, right? You see audio from this section right here. We have the ability to route audio into the track, completely superseding this. So I'll just stop that. And it'll only occur if we allow it. Right, so there's monitor um, off, which means that we're not hearing it. Auto means that it, you know, it only comes through, and we only hear it once we arm it to record. Uh, we're going to get into recording later and arming to record. But if I hit in, I will actually hear my voice with a delay. You'll hear my voice twice. It's going to be weird. So this is what's going to happen. Check, check. Oh no! Check, 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 check. Right? So my voice is now coming in and, you know, it's going into the send and stuff like that. And this is a way to supersede things. And this is how we get tracks into, or this is how we get signals into the track. Right? And uh, that's how we record, essentially. And I'll just show you how to do that. I'm going to arm this to record, and you'll notice that these squares change shape. They change to uh, record here. And I'm just going to record, and it create a new clip here. I'm going to double-click on it, and you can see my voice down there. Holy moly, that's my voice. So I'm creating a new clip, and there you go. I'll just uh, stop that. Um, and I'll just get rid of all this. So yeah, I've, I've, I've effectively, you know, hijacked the uh, track here, and I can turn it back to off, and then I can listen to this guy, record, and it create a new clip here. I'm gonna double see. So that's how you, that's how you record. I'm gonna get into recording more a little bit later. So with the tracks, we have our input. We can route um, input into it only if we let it, right? And this will be, you know, the track once again. And the other input can be MIDI. And for a MIDI channel, it will also accept MIDI. We're not going to be covering MIDI in this video, but we can send, we can get MIDI in in order to play really cool instruments uh, down the line. And you know what, I might as well just kind of show you what that is, since we're already arming things to record. I'm gonna drag in Wavetable from the Instruments tab here, and I'm just gonna play some stuff. Right, we can see I'm getting MIDI from, and that's coming from outside of the track, Right? There's no clips going on, but MIDI is coming in. And monitor is on uh, auto, so when I have this arm to record, I can actually play it with uh, the, the, the typing keyboard. Right, So I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to explain that more in detail, because I really don't want to kind of gloss over this. All right, so this is a track, right? And then we have... Um, an in, right? This in can be uh, audio or this can be MIDI. And depending on what's going on, the MIDI will kind of be able to come from the outside world or the audio will be able to come from the outside world. But only if we allow it. It's up to us whether this uh, wall is broken down. And that is dictated by monitoring, right? So monitoring allows us to check, uh, allows us to dictate whether or not we have outside sources coming in, you know, right? It allows us, it is our, it is our choice. If not, you know, it'll just play stuff 
through the, the, the clip, essentially, right? We can always see me talking in this two here. Wait, we always see me talking there, but we're not actually hearing it until we allow it uh, to come through by either hitting in, in or, or off, right? Or if I go auto and I arm it to record, record I'll, hear I'll hear myself. Okay. There's another thing there. So typically, we have the uh, the master out here. Master out. And by default, uh, all tracks are fed into the master. That doesn't always have to be the case. You know how we can choose and route audio into the track? We can actually choose to route it out. And that is very important. Okay, so I'm going to to show you what that is and that is the audio 2 audio 2 gives us a choice of where we want to put things right now it's default to the master i can select the drop down and i can have that to external out through a thing in my sound card uh, and right now i can only i can set it to the master or sends only let's say if i wanted to make another track Right, uh, track three audio. I did that by right clicking and uh, creating a new track. I can actually send this to that track now, like audio two, three audio, which is the next track over. And you'll notice that if I go, I go in, in, oops, um, I can't, I got confused there. So I'm sending the audio to, uh, I need to set this to something rather there we go so no actually i set that off let me hit the kick here and we will be able to, to listen listen why am i, why am I coming through twice? twice am i no no no, no, I, don't no, no I don't want i don't want i have to set I that to set that I have to set that, sorry, I have to set those to no input. Forgot, I'll set that to no input too. So audio from no input, and now, because audio three is, be, or this kick is being sent to audio three, we are hearing it in here. Right, so if I mute this, we're not actually hearing the kick from audio two. We're hearing it through audio three because it's being sent there. There's an easier way to go about doing this. So that's why that one part confused me. How you go about doing that is, you know, you say you have a bunch of tracks together. What you can do is select all of them or select the tracks that you want to put together to go into another uh, channel. And then you can right click and then group tracks. And that will create a group. And then automatically audio audio uh, from all these will go into the the group together right so things will be summed here and then we can close it and it's kind of all encompassing in the one group that's a uh, very um, important there so sending them to uh, other channels something you know we don't usually do that often because we have uh, groupings and it's just far more easier uh, routing can get a little more uh, complicated once we get into something called sidechain compression where you send um, a part of one track into a an effect of another to do something called ducking um that's a little bit uh you know outside of the scope of this video but we're going to get into that uh pretty soon so i've effectively gone over you know quite a few things and i hope that makes sense to you uh, all these things apply to the session view as well so you know all these things apply and there's the the, the input output you can select here as well but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you learned stuff. Take care and see you in the next one.